So let's talk about polymorphism. This is, you know, like computer science, when you're starting out, the type of stuff we're doing this semester, we don't have a lot of big, scary vocabulary words. This is maybe the only one. Um, and so it's worth kind of stopping and pausing and kind of going through this together. Um, the first thing about polymorphism is you don't have to be afraid of it. It's, you know, actually a pretty natural idea. And we'll work through a bunch of examples where we'll see how it works in practice and that'll help solidify the idea in your mind. But what is it? Um, so polymorphism is actually a much more general principle than how we're actually looking at it today. Today what we're going to be looking at is one specific kind of polymorphism, which is sometimes known as subtype polymorphism. You can see it described on the Wikipedia page as subtyping. Um, and this is sort of directly related to these inheritance relationships that we establish in Java using the extends keyword. We talked about that yesterday. So um, the, the most important part of this definition that I want to pick out um, is this part right here. Um, the provision of a single interface to entities of different types. Um, and that, that sort of snippet of the definition contains a bunch of things that we don't really understand, right? So for example, interface, that's a term that actually has a very specific meaning in computer science. And we're going to come back to that because we're going to have a whole, you know, good, better part of a week where we talk about interfaces, because that's actually a really cool feature of the Java programming language that I think in many ways is more powerful than inheritance for producing sort of flexible modular code. Um, but, you know, different. So what does the rest of this mean? You know, single interface to entities of different types. Um, and so the idea here is, I think actually, when I think about polymorphism, what I'd like to go back to is the word itself, polymorphism. So poly means many, um, and morph is this idea of being able to change, right? You know, I can morph into something different, kind of shapeshifters or whatever. Um, and the idea behind polymorphism is that a single instance of a Java class, an object, can actually behave like different types of object. So polymorphism, that single entity, can appear in multiple different ways. And what we're going to see when we start writing code that uses this, is this happen very directly. I can pass, if I have a method in Java that accepts an object, I can accept pass any Java object, whether it's a string or some custom object I created to that method, because every Java object can morph into an instance of capital O object. It can behave like a capital O object, and that's because every object in Java is related to capital O object. And so there's a connection between the inheritance that we talked about in the last lesson and the idea of polymorphism, um, and the, it's the inheritance relationships that actually create the poly and polymorphism. That's what gives most Java classes the ability to act like different things, because Every Java class, except for capital object, has capital object as a, a superclass or, or a parent or an ancestor, which we talked about yesterday. And so every single class can act like an instance of its own class or also like a capital object. So there's polymorphism pretty much for any Java class. Once I start to create um, these object hierarchies using extends that we started to look at yesterday and we'll continue looking at today with things like pets and people and stuff like that. Then you see even more, the poly gets bigger, right? So poly means many, but it doesn't say how many. So every Java object except for capital object can behave like at least two Java objects, its own class and a capital object. But once we start creating inheritance hierarchies using extends, those objects can actually behave like even more objects. And again, we're going to go through this, but you know, the, the key thing to understand here, and again, come back to the definition, right? Polymorphism, um, multiple and change. So the instances of our objects in Java can behave like different types of objects, depending on the context in which they're used, and also depending on the inheritance relationships that we've established in our code.